chairperson uh, dr simadi gowda and my dear co-panelists uh, dear scholars friends students i am very happy to be here this afternoon to share my views in this session actually this session is titled as the impact of globalization on travel literature and i have titled my paper like this uh, from orature to literature impact of globalization on south indian travel literature the impact of global uh, let me straight go to the paper the impact of globalization is being felt in all realms of all the communities in the world and tribes are no exception to this and so also their literature unlike the literature of the chirographic cultures what i mean to say chirographic cultures the cultures which are influenced by the literacy the cultures which have scripts the cultures which have alphabets the cultures which have established the languages those cultures can be called as chirographic cultures whereas the cultures that we are discussing about from this morning they are primarily oral culture but not prim exactly thoroughly oral culture there are a lot of changes are also happening but for the understanding we have to understand there are oral cultures and the written cultures written cultures are another term is chirographic cultures the mostly the tribal cultures are oral culture why they are oral culture because they have language but they don't have script and not only they don't have script they are not influenced by the literacy they are not influenced by the uh, literature or writing forms and all so if you understand the basic nature of the tribal culture it will be easy for us to understand the literature of the tribes so i want to make this distinction okay so unlike the literature of the chirographic cultures the literature of the tribes exists mostly in oral forms as their languages or dialects normally do not have scriptures whereas written cultures will have both oral and uh, written whereas oral cultures will have normally oral alone because they don't have the opportunity to get uh, literature written culture written literature but definitely it is happening due to changes now that too we are going to assess what is happening on the uh, tribes especially i will be sharing some of the uh, glimpses what is happening in the tamil nadu tribes uh, mostly okay uh, so in a way all the tribal culture are basically orator due to the scholars efforts and other socio economic and technological developments and also due to the impact of literacy among the tribal people their oral their orator has faced a lot of changes in terms of their theme content form structure function etc so all that orator i mean to say the, the what you call you if you want to call tribal literature actually they are orator this all the orators are changing in its uh, theme in its content in its form its structure function everything is changing due to what due to the uh, in, uh, globalization how that is happening or what is the resultant product that only will be shared with you and for for to make you understand the impact of the globalization on the tribal literature definitely i will touch upon some of the literary attempts made during the pre globalization era only if you understand what is what had happened in the pre globalization era you will be in a position to appreciate the impact that has happened on the tribal literature okay <clears throat> so in addition to this literature as an important genre entered in their expressive cultural forms this is very important point i want to make see in literature you have different different genres story genre poetry genre novel genre all these things see our understanding you know because of the influence of literature we expect all those genres you do, you expect or you want to find out all those genres in the tribal cultures also or tribal literature also but you have to remember there are certain genres which are present among the tribes do not have their equivalence in the so called established literature also one such thing is you know to, uh, I, i want to tell you the example so for example satupattu as a genre of kanika tribe it that genre you cannot equate 
with any of the genres of the uh, any of the literary genres you cannot simply say it is a ballad you cannot simply say it is a divinatory song you cannot simply say it is a, a recreation song it is a unique it has its own unique form like you know if i um, like i want to make the comparison because some of the scholars from karnataka you are here there is a genre padana padana in tulu that padana tulu that's a genre that genre do not have any equivalent in any of the world languages because it is unique in a way it is a, a divinatory song in a way it is a song sung during the possession time in a way it is a minor form all these things so what i want to say we cannot expect the uniform genres in the uh, literary uh, tribal literatures if you understand this thing then only we will be in a position to understand what was the impact that had happened on the tribal literature or the tribal orator okay so the emergence of literature among the tribes are both endogenous and exogenous that again you know now yes whether the uh, impact of globalization is there or not the 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 the, the, the tribal literature or tribal orators are facing changes that changes are now happening due to the uh, indigenous forces which means due to their own community whether you do something or not also it will change and also there are some extraneous changes by so many forces outside forces they are also making attempt in that in uh, keeping this background let me uh, tell you some of the uh, works that have uh, taken place among the tribes in tamil nadu and uh, some of the, i will be touching upon some of the works done during the pre globalization era and also during the globalization era so as to make you the understand the impact that had happened and another important thing i have to tell you it is not a big thing um, uh, though not many exhaust not many works have uh, not, not many literate, literature attempts have happened among the tribes of uh, tamil nadu in fact you know even if you want to make a review it is very easy to make a review of literature whereas certain areas you cannot make a extensive or uh, reasonable uh, literature review but if you really want to make a attempt to review the literature works carried out on tribe tamil nadu tribes it is very easy not by many big works so uh, that is the reason why i am not going to give you the review where but i will be touch upon some of the important works carried out here and there let me take on um, uh, earlier uh, instead of taking the work by work i want to change it in different direction let us go community by community but i will not be taking more time uh, let's see for example toda toda are one of the well known tribes in in fact you know throughout the world on toda only there are more works have been carried out but the people in the population of the toda you know very less okay on toda due to whr rivers uh, the toda was uh, toda happened to know uh, be uh, known everywhere so all all uh, all anthropologists all people wanted to study the todas the, um, uh, after whr rivers it was amano uh, mandelbaum all people concentrated on toda and they have um, uh, in addition to the other works they wanted to uh, do or collect some of their little songs and but their aim of collecting songs you know uh, not to appreciate its aesthetic quality or not to tell about its beauty of the toda songs but their main aim you know they wanted to uh, study linguistically which means they they are mostly they are linguistic scholars see the whr river anthropologists study the tribe culturally everybody can to know about it they once it is culturally known everywhere the linguists enter the arena so like this only the people like uh, emano uh, emano came and mandelbaum in way he is an anthropologist and linguist also but their main aim of collecting toda songs or later kota songs was not to understand not to highlight it is literary quality but their aim is to find out the grammar of the toda language a uh, toda language or kota language you cannot uh, how to make the uh, to to understand to to devise grammatical patterns it is better to uh, document or uh, do- document their uh, literary sources it is very easy so songs were very easily they got the songs they you know, in fact you know those days there was no uh, technological device so they told you know, only dictation mode was uh, uh, adopted they identified some good uh, informant or good singer and they will pay money and he will sing songs and all in in fact i am going to tell you one information money money of you would not have heard about it unless otherwise you have read this uh, important works in fact for uh, emano he collected songs from a one part, uh, one particular person from uh, toda 
uh, his name was roughly Sully and other thing. Uh, he was every day will be coming and singing songs. Uh, and he will sing the song and he will uh, uh, write it by dictation by by the uh, the diacritical marks or other other methods. What happened now? In fact, you know, he was during those days that Toda informant was a teacher himself. But what happened now? Uh, the salary what he got as a teacher was so less. Whereas if he comes every day to Yamano, he used to get one rupee per day those days. One rupee per day some hundred years ago, or it was um, considered to be more. At one point of time, that informant uh, uh, resigned his job and continued to work, or continued to sing, or continued to tell stories to Yamano, that level. So only through dictation. But the, after um, uh, getting dictation, they make the notation and other things. Uh, and uh, they, public, they published the transliteration, English transliteration, with the little bit of uh, translation. And also their aim was to understand the grammar, to understand the uh, syntactic structure and other thing. That was the one stage. Then after some time, you know, uh, there some of the other works are coming. Let me come to the, some of the other tribes uh, widely represented in the uh, tribal literature. One, imp one uh, and also I have to tell one important point in Tamil Nadu. Uh, there are 36 tribes, about 5-6 tribes we are not able to identify where they live. There are so, so many issues are there. Uh, then around 20, among the 20 tribes, accepting one uh, tribe. All the other tribes have some or other their own dialect. The, what is that one tribe which is uh, not having any of its own dialect or language, you know? It is called Malayali. But Malayali, no connection with the Kerala. My uh, from friend uh, Shamjit is here, many uh, Kerala friends are there. We have a tribe called Malayali, but they are not related to Keralite. They are Malay tribe people, mountain people. In fact, you know, their language is Tamil, whereas all the other Tamil Nadu tribes have their own dialects, whether it is um, uh, uh, Paliyar or Irula or uh, uh, Paniyar, whatever it is. So, um, the, 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 in fact, you know, the, the, I, I, there, I am really surprised why is that now not much literature literary works of our nature, the present day classical literature or written literature not emerged much from the Malayali community in spite of the fact that they do not have, they, do, they, didn't, they don't face a, much of isolation and other things. But in spite of that, there were some literatures on that Malayali tribe have happened. One such work is by uh, one Kuchinapa uh, Bharati. He wrote a very good novel, a very famous novel. In fact, it is a uh, now we can very well call that is a travel novel, but that novel has wide uh, popularity in the Tamil literary circle. That uh, novel called Sangam. What was it depicting? In fact, Kuchinapa Bharati, he himself is a uh, estate owner, but he wrote a novel on the tribals uh, who were facing the uh, difficulty of uh, under the uh, land owners and other estate uh, owners. Um, that is one thing. And uh, that is one important thing. Later, uh, in fact, you know, more or less with this, the same type of uh, uh, attitude or background only, the one I want to uh, compare that Sangam novel of Chennapa Bharati written a few decades ago in Tamil Nadu. I want to relate that work to the present recent work of C.K. Janus um, uh, Kerala work. I, um, let me read a small brief of that work. C.K. Janus work, everybody knows. It is uh, uh, in Malayalam, that work is called Janivin Indes Jeevithi Gata. It was later translated uh, by as Mother Forest. Um, uh, in, this is an account of her personal life by the well known social activist and tribal leader C.K. Janu. This work has both the Malayalam and the English versions. Janu's perspective in this book is certainly that of a member of a tribal group who looks upon outsiders with the feelings of fear and suspicion. The history of the tribal sign, why not? Which means the recent day con contemporary problems C.K. John, she herself faced and she has written it in Malayalam, later it has translated. But I can see the precursor for this, uh, the, 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 the antecedent attempt was done much earlier in Tamil by, um, by Chennapa Bharati. Incidentally, he was not tribe. But the same type of method only, the, the plight of the tribals only has been narrated by C.K. John, which means, you know, the times, uh, times are changing, but the problems of the um, uh, tribes are becoming much more complex and complex in spite of the, that is only I want to highlight. Another important thing, you know, whoever writes novel on tribe, whether it is a person like Janu herself 
or be persons like uh, chennappa bharathi or anybody there is also one important point i find most of them are ideologically tuned i more ideologically tuned in the sense they were um, with the left ideology only they have uh, they are producing their novels whether it is chennappa bharathi or even sikka janu um, the somehow or other the ideological left ideological tone was there that is one thing Uh, and whereas the, so there very rarely we find people with the neutral ideology one such work such as koma godandam's work on the paliya tribe is not that much ideologically overtoned whereas even the kurinjimala written by rajam krishnan also highly overtoned by the left ideology that is uh, it is up against substitu- substantiating my earlier point now i want to come to a very important contribution which i myself uh, work actually i have worked among the urulas for a quite a long time uh, i have um, uh, written about their uh, uh, i have collected their oral epics i have collected the minor form tales all these things but i want to bring to this uh, august audience here we have attempted to publish the some of the tales collected uh, from the urulas in in fact uh, i want to uh, tell about the small uh, about that work that work we published in the year 2005 Uh, this is another interesting thing you know uh, the um, the malayali tribe is the largest tribe second largest tribe is the irula but there are more literary works literature works on irula have come and a lot of uh, important thing in fact what i did uh, you know i have collected hundreds of tales uh, for several hours but only about 30 tales i wanted to publish that publication came as a part of a series of uh, publication brought out by none other than professor aru ramanathan who is sitting here he is the chief editor he wanted to bring out uh, several volumes one of the volumes in his series is my volume my volume contains all the tales from the irula community and uh, we why i want to tell you it is not only the tales what kind of methodology we adopted in presentation see i mean in fact you know with because i am uh, anthropologist but i have uh, i have used all the uh, present day available technological devices to record and document but once i wanted to publish as it is uh, as it is in the sense you know without changing any of the words without editing i wanted to present to the audience um, in fact you know i have collected um, not from the iruliga dialect directly i told my informants to tell the stories in the language with they, which which they are able to communicate which means they are able to communicate in tamil but they can they are tamil you cannot understand as it is unless otherwise you know certain things so what we did you know uh, that uh, process of documentation i want to show the stories they narrated for me in tamil in the way in which they use the language are given in this volume 29 such stories recorded by me were transliterated for documentation we should keep in mind the stories were not translated into tamil remember we didn't translate even single uh, tale because already it is in a rough tamil as the storytellers themselves narrated them in tamil however when they were sent for publication my chief editor professor ramanathan advised me to edit uh, to edit to a possible extent so that to be readable and understandable by the wider tamil readers so i have only deleted the repetitions in fact i didn't modify much what i did you know with his advice i did deleted the repetitions and to the extent possible i have kept the narrate narrations as they were another important thing you know had there been verses i would not have taken away the uh, lines because of it is repeated in in fact i myself attempted to compile and document and uh, publish the 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 um, the, um paki paki kada irula uh, oral epics i have uh, pub- i have published as it is without modifying but because the tales are in prose forms here repetition would uh, lessen the interest of the readers so i have uh, did a little um, editing that is um, uh, but after that also what i did you know i also attached a glossary at the end of the work so so as to people uh, to understand the meaning so with the glossary but not much editing so but this what i see you know this is a one kind of uh, um one kind of editing mode to present the work to the wider audience the, the reason you know even some of the uh, language publications language literatures of tamil like thing you know you don't uh, print books for uh, nowadays uh, books on demand even the uh, publishers reduce the number of copies of print 
from 1500 to 1000 to 500 and all in such a case how we will read the uh, tribal language uh, literature if it is published in its own language in its own script or even if in translated form there are a lot of problems in that so there are you have to adopt you have to devise certain methodologies of uh, uh, publication when you make it to the wider audience so the, that is another thing another important thing is there are um, yield, because they are all collective products tribal literatures normally are collective products but the um, when it make when you make it for the present day kind of uh, written literature it involves a lot of individuals creativity so there are certain problems in it and another thing also you have to find out even though you are we are talking about tribal literature in a common parlance but each and every tribe has its own uniqueness the, as their cultures are unique, their literatures are also unique. For a, one small example, I will tell and then finish it. See, um, uh, because Toda, um, respectable Madam Vasamali is here, she is one of the, uh, I would consider her as the most important representative of the Toda community. She herself also published the volume, but she has adopted different uh, methodology of uh, publication. She only gave the English transliteration and the Tamil uh, description translation. That is her way of publication. But what I want to say now, if you go to Tauda, they, um, though they are tribe, they are having a personalized uh, expression. You, you ask any Tauda, every song they will contextualize every time. It is, in fact, you know, it is much, much more than the flexibility of the folk song. I, because the leading scholars of folklore sitting here, they know about the versions. I want to say, you know, the Toda songs, if you um, uh, ask any Toda, um, the, she will sing. She will sing any song that is sung or present, uh, it will be having the present, uh, pre the, the presence of my uh, time, that present time, the, uh, the present time, you know, which means she will relate to the, uh, that, part, that particular point's uh, activities. So this, uh, this is a personalized thing. Whereas if you analyze the Kota songs, you will see a lot of group uh, uh, group creativity. And also there is also a relationship between the group creativity and individual creativity. Yeah, among the Toda, you, yeah, single, single Toda can, uh, can, uh, can crash the hundreds of cattle. So yeah, in fact, you, know, you can relate the aesthetic quality. One, one, one Toda can manage with 500 uh, cattle. And uh, so also the one Toda represents, one Toda, sing, one Toda sings a personalized experience. But the quota, no quota can produce economic activity on his own. He has to have the uh, friendship or collaboration with the people so as to produce their crafts. So their, their literatures are plus having the uh, con uh, collectivity in its nature. So, so many things are there. In fact, my, the, my argument, you know, due to globalization, there are so many things are happening on the tribal life, so also in their ORHS, and but when you make it uh, uh, available to the other people, we should have the the cultural sensitivity of looking into the tribal literature that is very important without having the cultural sensitivity if you want to produce that literature it will be one and the same it will, they, you will not be having the uniqueness you can't bring about the uniqueness of the tribal literatures in the in fact it is morning there, there are some uh, some uh, ideas were brought out like dalit literature they will be having only the protestant element in this or suffering element in this so like that the tribal literature will be having much more than that so many other things will be there and it is to be highlighted appropriately without using any uniform scale in it so uh, throw away the uniform scale understand the uniqueness of each and every tribal communities and their literature thank you very much uh, thing is you know almost um, uh, all their uh, uh, no uh, uh, literary activity will be simply literary activity for any tribe community that is applicable for you also. See what I want to say, you know, uh, there is um, uh, here only in the written culture, chirography culture, our normal cultures, literature is for literature or literature for aesthetics. But in the, among the tribal com uh, the Irula community, uh, see whatever, whenever they do, there will be some uh, recitation or some song or some uh, prose, uh, uh, storytelling all these things will be there but uh, in uh, snake for during snake catching they don't have anything because it is uh, life risk uh, sorry risk involved you cannot sing a song and catch a uh, snake uh, uh, so you have to, in fact you have to dance according to the snakes so there is no songs uh, uh, 
uh, uh, on snake catching. May, they may be having so there in some of their stories, their experiences, something will be there. Uh, so you cannot have the associated song of uh, snake catching activity. As far as I know, I have not found. Occasions are there, or there. Yeah, yeah, that and all there. That and all there. Yeah, in not only that, their experiences they have narrated later, not during the activity, whereas other. Yes, yeah. In fact, there is one, two, there are two things, two genres uh, unexplored. One is Parikulithar, another one is Rangam Pordu. Parikulithal of the Northern Tamil Nadu Yurulas and similar activity in the Western Tamil Nadu Yurulas, that is Rangam Pordu. During Rangam Bodu the time, if um, it is very difficult to record those songs. In fact, you know, it is um, they, 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 the divinator start singing or start reciting only after 12 o'clock. But he also says that, you know, advises not to record. There are certain things, you know, there's a lot of beliefs attached with this. People will not be happy, will not be happy to be recorded their things. In fact, you no, know, once it is recorded, it will lose its power. So many things involved. So, um, uh, in fact, you know, only for this type of things only, there is a need of anthropologists or uh, folklorists to tell about them, that to tell about them or to, to, to raise, the, to speak for them, but not to demean them or to do some harm, whereas other people will be doing harm in the name of speaking for them. So 